Good morning, WordCamp Europe. How are you guys doing? So I assume you guys are not sleepy. Uh, I was sleepy, so I grabbed a coffee uh, to overcome my jet lag. I flew around uh, 14 hours. So yeah. Um, today we are going to talk about um, changing landscape of WordPress marketing. Uh, how we used to market our WordPress product and how we are doing it now. So we are going to discuss that. Um, uh, this is Afsana Dia. I'm the CMO at WP Developer. WP Developer is a WordPress product company which is powering up around uh, 5 million users for uh, using their uh, WordPress plugin. So before I... Um, before I start the session, I would like to talk about uh, my WordPress journey a bit. So for me, I started uh, using WordPress. Uh, um, I started using WordPress back in 2009 when I was in high school. So I started using WordPress for a blog. I didn't know about the ecosystem, I didn't know about the other plugins, I didn't know about the anything else, right? Uh, and then after a while, uh, I tried to make my own uh, website for using WordPress. I, I tried to make a homepage, uh, that's back in 2012. So is there anyone who used WordPress back in 2012? I, I see a few hands. So. If you remember, um, there was no page builder back in that time. There was no Gutenberg. There was uh, nothing like this uh, at that time. So the focus was theme. You had to pick a theme, and then you build your website with a lot of uh, customization. So at that time, uh, I don't even remember which theme I used. Uh, after that, I finished my undergrad back in 2016. Uh, I did my uh, undergrad in uh, business administration. I had dual major in um, I had dual major in marketing and e-business. So when I finished uh, my um, undergrad, I joined a WordPress product company. I got involved in the WordPress product. Uh, at that time, I revamped my personal website. Since I am no code, so for me it was hard to make the website, right? That back in 2012 and back in 2016 as well. Uh, in 2016, uh, there was Base Builder. So uh, there was DV, already popular. Uh, Elementor was starting at that point. But if you remember, there was no such customization like this at that time. So I still had the tr struggle. Then I uh, started working with WordPress product company. I worked with a product company which was doing great uh, accidentally. How come a company can do great accidentally? because they didn't know what's working and what's not. They didn't have a marketing team. So I tried to explore WordPress marketing. Uh, I tried to do multiple things. Some of the things worked, and I uh, got some good uh, ROI from my marketing initiatives. Move forward to 2018, I joined WP Developer at their starting point. At that time, we had only few uh, thousand uh, user for our one plugin. Uh, in 2019, we got our first 1,000 user for essential add-ons. Uh, in 2019, I also got involved with other uh, WordPress community. Uh, we had our first WordPress Dhaka in Bangladesh. Uh, I got involved in Make WordPress. Uh, and then uh, move forward to COVID. All of the 
other pandemic stuffs and struggles and technology update, Gutenberg, REST API, React. Uh, today, right now, we have 5 million users for WP developer with all of our products. So that's kind of achievement. Um, so uh, the things I have done for WP developer, uh, we have done for WP developer, some of the thing works. Or maybe a lot of thing works. Uh, the thing is that um, I have been in WordPress ecosystem for last eight years doing WordPress marketing. Uh, moving with the community. Uh, I know what is going on and what we did and what uh, not. So I would like to talk about my experience. I would like to share some insights. Uh, before that, how many of you are marketer here? Can you raise your hand? I see few hands. How many of you are a WordPress developer? Oh, thanks to you because for attending my session. And how many of you are WordPress uh, business owner or product owner? Interestingly, that's the lowest amount of people raise hand. But thank you so much. Uh, today, we are going to, I am going to request everyone uh, to don't sell WordPress plugin like it's 2016 because uh, why we are talking about that because if there if there was something that uh, was working great that was great uh, probably war worked back in 2018 2016 but that's not going to work now and if you are keep doing that you are basically pissing your users off. You are making your user frustrated with the same things that you keep doing for years. Uh, the world has changed. Uh, if you look at the CMS, WordPress has grown so much over the time. So is the Shopify, Wix, and other, other solutions. So if, I, if you look at those platform, uh, they have doing, uh, they are doing so, so many things. And for WordPress, uh, in 2016 or 2018, there was very few uh, WordPress product company. There was uh, very few serious product business. But right now, if you look, uh, there are many. So if they find a solution which is better than yours, if they find a solution that is uh, more powerful than yours, uh, that would be the better thing they will go for, right? So previously, people used to come to the customer support in your website. They used a lot of time uh, with pre-sale conversation with the support rep, and then made the uh, purchase decision. Uh, but right now, uh, this is the data from recent time. Uh, there's only 5% uh, customers who use, uh, who come to the website to talk with the support rep uh, before making purchase decision. But interestingly, there are 27% people who actually spend more time on self-research before buying your WordPress plugin. More interestingly, there are 77% people who actually prefer, who thinks that uh, the buying process is complicated, uh, purchase journey is complicated for a uh, software product. So talking about that, things have changed so far. If you um, look at the scenario, what happened previously, uh, if you are a business owner, or if you are an end user, you own the company, you would look for the solution that you need. Uh, then you would request for a product de demo. But right now, uh, the end user could be the team member of the company who are using your product. So the team member will activate the free trial, 
they will add team mem more team member and then, then team member will actually fall in love with the, your product. They will manage the uh, higher authority to get this product for them. Uh, previously, it was done by the product owner or the company owners. So why this happened? There are some challenges. Um, what are the challenges we are facing so far? I will talk a little bit about the challenges. The first thing is technological advancement. Uh, think about the root, uh, Gutenberg React or REST API. Uh, it has changed the way people used to think and perceive about WordPress ecosystem. So there are so many new technology, there are new uh, languages that we need to adapt. Uh, for our company, I can give one, one short example. For our company, uh, WP Developer, uh, when Gutenberg was getting available uh, back in 2018, 19, uh, we tried to explore uh, Gutenberg for our product. So we were trying to look for React developer. Uh, we are based in Dhaka, Bangladesh. So in Bangladesh, the WordPress community is very popular. Uh, there are a big, large number of uh, people active in WordPress community. So we look for React developer, and interestingly, there was no one. So what we had to do is like, we tried to make our uh, in-house team to learn about React. We arranged an uh, in-house React course, and right now we have a lot of React developer in our team. Uh, so that's one problem we had to solve in a way, but I know a lot of friends of mine who are struggling for the tech uh, in recent years, which is changing the way they used to market their product. And another uh, big changes is the behavior of web creator. If you remember, uh, previously we used to pick a theme and make the website. But right now, since there are a lot of base builder like um, Elementor, DB, uh, Beaver Builder, and there is Gutenberg, which is all alone, uh, very much ready to make the website. So right now, uh, previously, the same web creator, the way they used to think, their, their mindset has been changed. So they try to find a solution which is more relevant. So previously, there was very few WordPress plugin. There was very few WordPress theme, but right now there are around 60,000 WordPress free plugin in the repository, which means you have 60,000 WordPress plugin ready for your next website, as well as there are also um, 100 or 1,000 of individual seller who are selling from their own website or probably marketplace, so you have ready solution. And the uh, WordPress infrastructure, infrastructure also um, very much ready for the customization without more uh, effort. So the attention span of the customers, that's very limited. Another things that manipulate the uh, landscape of marketing is uh, the rise and fall of social media marketing. So do you remember about Clubhouse? Have anyone used Clubhouse two years back? There was a whole hype about Clubhouse. Uh, it was an invitation-only platform. Uh, so the invitation was also limited for the user uh, who are using the platform. So it, it feels like superior if you can get an invitation to Clubhouse. Uh, it seems like Clubhouse is going to be the ne next big thing, but where is Clubhouse now? 
Are any of you using it now? No, I don't see any hand. <laughs> so yes, uh, there are many changes over the social platform because that's one of the major thing uh, we use for marketing. Uh, right now, there are a few other, other social platforms like TikTok and other stuff, which uh, could be very interesting for some of the users, some of the products, but for most of the products, probably it's not. And then we also have uh, another big problem about paid media marketing. Uh, if you know, uh, I can remember back in 2018 when we were trying paid ad, there was very few uh, competitors, so the ad cost was very low uh, because unless a company is very serious about WordPress products, they wouldn't use the paid ads. But look at this now. Uh, if you search about WordPress, probably on first page of uh, Google search, you will see half page of ads uh, for different kind of products, meaning there are a lot of competition in the paid ads, uh, which is the reason uh, the cost of ads increase so high and per user acquisition through paid ads is very expensive. And there are another challenges, GDPR, and <laughs> privacy concern. I, I assume by this time, everyone is pretty much concerned about the GDPR because uh, it can get you sued for 20 million just for one case. So that's another thing we need to keep in our, in our mind before uh, doing anything. And there is another major problem with Google changing their algorithm every now and then. So if you are using uh, some sort of tools, probably it will be easier to manage your SEO on your WordPress website thanks to the WordPress SEO plugins. Uh, it got easier comparative to five years or 10 years ago, uh, there is no doubt. But when you figure out how to rank your uh, landing page on uh, Google, before you figure out the whole thing, the Google will change their algorithm again. It happened to many of you, I think. Um, so that's another thing. Google algorithm is changing so much. Uh, comparing with the previous time and right now, and the SEO become more harder since uh, a lot of people are making a lot of effort to rank on the first page, uh, which is not good for you specifically. When you are ch uh, trying to rank higher, that's not, uh, that makes it harder for your competitor as well, right? And there is another uh, talent and skills gaps in WordPress marketing. Uh, personally, when we try to hire the capable and talented people for our marketing team, uh, one common challenge is that uh, if there is someone who is, uh, who is capable of taking the marketing things well, then probably they don't have a tech background. If they have a tech background, they don't have marketing skill. So you have to actually train people to know and understand the WordPress ecosystem. And after all these challenges, we need to start selling in a way that our buyer uh, wants to purchase. So how can we do that? Uh, one of the thing is you have to understand your user first. Uh, you have to understand your target audience, not the whole WordPress uh, users are your target audience or not that anyone randomly is your target audience. You have to be very specific about that. You have to analyze your customer behavior, uh, track your user journey, uh, depending on where are your users are coming from? Where is um, uh, 
they are which page of your website they are actually uh, scrolling, which button they are clicking. You have to track to understand better and uh, make your customer experience better for the next. And then you have to test your product with the real person. Uh, most of the time, what a lot of WordPress owners or plugin developers do, they build something, they test it themselves, and then they release the product and they expect the outcome. But it doesn't happen, right? So if you have um, built something, you need some, someone, the third party, to, to try your product to understand what it feels like for the end user. And if I talk about the team members, um, have you ever heard about a person with 10 hands? 10 hands mean a WordPress developer who build the plugin, do the UI, do the UX, and do the marketing all alone. So that's not going to work anymore. Uh, you need to have your solid uh, team from design team, development team, testing team, marketing team, and support team. Uh, to ensure that your product um, is ready to meet the user's real need. So what we can do? We need to focus on customers, uh, what they want, uh, how they want, and uh, the experience they are going to get through your uh, product. So here comes the PLG. Anyone heard about PLG? So PLG is product-led growth. Uh, it's a way that uh, you can build your product in a way so it can be used, uh, it can sell itself, uh, focusing on leveraging the products to drive uh, growth uh, automatically. Uh, I can give you some examples. So you can understand. So most of these tools are very well known from Slack to Dropbox to Figma. These are SaaS tools, but um, if you can think about the pattern, all of this product, they need to uh, use by other party. For example, I can talk about Zoom. Uh, if you sign up Zoom and want to have a um, video call, you need another person. So you are inviting another person, they are signing up for the product. So your product needs to, in a way that it has to be sales itself. And we also have ChatGPT and AI, uh, which is another big thing. Uh, I think we have few sessions about ChatGPT and AI today. Uh, I just asked ChatGPT about uh, what they can do for marketing, and this is the stuff they suggested. So it's not like they can do it uh, everything and they will do it better than human, but there's a good way to utilize your uh, team's potential and probably uh, spend uh, less time on some tasks. So I have a few quick tips for WordPress marketer uh, that I have learned from my own experience uh, for all the products I have been marketing. So dig deeper into your competitors. Uh, we do competitor analysis. Uh, a lot of people actually copied the feature from your uh, competitor, but don't, don't do that. Look at the competitor's features and uh, websites and they are even customer review to understand what's working well for them, uh, what they are not doing well, that their customers are complaining. So you can actually um, do bring those things from in your products and do NPS and reviews to measure your customer satisfaction. Uh, I know in WordPress, people actually don't use these things much. Uh, people mostly rely on the WordPress repository uh, reviews or their personal uh, 
uh, website reviews. But uh, if you try to put an email campaign to ask for NPS, uh, net promoter scores, uh, you can understand if your customers are satisfied with the product or not. Uh, and again, there is a video. Uh, if, uh, if I look back at a few years back, there was no much videos in WordPress ecosystem, but if you search in uh, YouTube right now, there are 100 videos of each and every topics. And there are also webinar and uh, live streaming, um, podcast that people are using for to market their WordPress product. And another tip is that you need to set up and pig, uh, set up your pixel from the start when you launch a product, uh, so that you can utilize those visitors when uh, you are ready. And then uh, after a while, uh, you will. Uh, try to retarget them uh, for better campaign. Uh, also, make most out of your content marketing. Uh, publish resourceful content. Why I say resourceful is because um, for each and every WordPress topic, there are like 10 to 50 articles on the same topic. So what's the point? You have to make your content um, at least th that gives some kind of uh, help which others are not providing. Uh, you also need to keep updating your content. So uh, if you have published something back in 2020, which was relevant at that time, but it's not relevant anymore. So you need to build, um, you need to keep updating your content and also build guides uh, which can be helpful for your users. And also, leverage influencer marketing. Uh, if you talk about influencer marketing, a lot of people think that it's only for the uh, probably beauty blogs or probably uh, other stuff. But even for WordPress, uh, you can actually ut utilize um, influencer marketing. Uh, if you are building a WooCommerce plugin, uh, we have Bob WP attending WordCamp Europe. Uh, if you can uh, onboard Bob to promote your product, that would be a great uh, uh, use. And sponsor, contribute, or attend WordCamp or community events. Uh, you cannot measure the exact outcome from these things, but the amount of uh, exposure you will get, the amount of experience you will gain from these events, that's unbeatable. So, take a stand for a better future through sustainable and ethical marketing. Uh, what I mean is like, you need to keep the honesty, transparency, uh, sustainability, and privacy of your user uh, so you can make the marketing space better, not clumsy, uh, so that you don't make your customer or potential customer uh, frustrated about your product. So we have few takeaways from this session. Uh, understand your audience well, know uh, in depth, so what they want to do, how they want to do, and how you can help them. Build a passionate and dynamic team who, who really wants to uh, do something with all their passion. Create a really, really good product. There is no alternative of that. And you need to also adapt the technology, use tool for better, and make most out of it. Uh, stay up updated about the tech and the community and whatever ha uh, is happening around. Uh, make it sustainable and do it ethically. Thank you. Thank you so much, Afsana, for a fantastic talk. I, I've got so many takeaways from it on top of what you uh, have said. And personally, I am so delighted that you once again said something that is 
that is so important, which is research and test and know exactly what your customer what, wants. What so your customer wants, super right. Super interesting. Now, as before, if uh, anyone has any questions, the microphones are halfway down or up the stairs. So please um, gather and, and ask your questions to Afsana. In the meantime, I have, well, I have more than one actually, but the first one is, it's a really incredible growth that you showed us of your of WP developer. So you went from, I mean, already 100,000 users is impressive, but then you jumped from that to 5 million. Do you think that the pandemic helped or, well, you were at the helm of the marketing. So what did you do to get to such an amazing result? Well, uh, that's the secret. <laughs> Very uh, good answer. Uh, we did actually a lot of things. Uh, uh, from our perspective, it's not like uh, just the pandemic. We were actually growing before the pandemic as well. But definitely pandemic uh, held the whole ecosystem as well. Uh, one of the major things that uh, I personally feel is very unique about my team is that all of them are passionate and uh, we do whatever we do with all their passion, and we do it constantly. So there are also a lot of things that didn't work, but the things that work, those uh, are the things that a lot of people um, probably didn't even try. Consistency Thank and you. a great team. Right, I, we, have a, we have a question, please. Hello. Uh, thank you so much for the talk. Um, I had to, a question if you could just get a little bit more specific about how you track the customer journey. Um, there are many tools to, to track uh, customer's journey. Uh, for example, uh, if you are looking for um, WordPress, uh, uh, have you installed uh, um, Google Tag Manager and other stuff in your website? Uh, I'm coming at it from a more of a video angle, uh, so yeah, on the on the back end of things, I, I was just hoping just to get a general idea. Yeah, thank okay, you. Okay, so um, Google Tag Manager and um, also uh, Google Tracking System, if those are perfectly uh, set up for your website, uh, it will you will see already few things like uh, which start from which source are your users are coming from your Google dashboard. And there are also a few other tools, uh, which is SaaS tools, uh, you can use for uh, more in-depth uh, understanding. I hope I have answered your question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions? Let me, I'm gonna just check if we have any questions from our online audience. In the meantime, I don't think so, unless... I think we have a question. Oh, yes, please. Hello. <laughs> yeah, I have one question. Uh, yeah. Great presentation, great numbers to see on the screen. So uh, I'm sure this question could be a lot of other people were asking about this question, like what's speci specifically for WordPress, what source of channel you were using to generate those numbers, uh, like... Um, content marketing, social media marketing, or maybe Google Ads, you know? I, I'm sure this is more like test and try thing, but yeah, then yeah, definitely. based on your experience, what you suggest? Uh, actually, uh, then there are many different platforms we have tried. Um, for our company, we have around 10 products, and we, have uh, we are using different platforms for different products. So, for example, um, if you have a product which is relevant to end user who roam around in Facebook, for that product, Facebook would work. So, for some of our product, um, some of the platform work and other didn't. But in general, if you ask me uh, for WordPress, uh, the best platform is Twitter. Uh, I think most of you would agree. Uh, and Google Ads, also retargeting campaigns, worked well for WordPress. Uh, 
Facebook and uh, other platform is for very niche user. Uh, but right now, uh, YouTube is also getting popular, YouTube ads. Uh, I hope that uh, I have answered your questions. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you. We still have got time for uh, a couple more questions if anyone wants to, to um, ask. But in the meantime, uh, while I have you have you another here, question? I, have, I actually have quite a few, but uh, one thing that interests me a lot, and already we've only, we're only like a couple of hours in, and already AI has been mentioned many times, and we have a panel coming up and various lightning talks about AI. But uh, so you mentioned this as well. And in the list that you had earlier about what ChatGPT can do for you, there, there was also market research, which obviously it can do. But how do you feel about actual customer research? Because that's something that you pointed out as very important. How do you feel about that? Can that ever be substituted? Uh, for market research? B uh, actual user research, so talking to real users. Can GPT do that? Yeah, yeah. So for uh, customer research, uh, we did the computer, we do the computer research in depth. So we, uh, not just the WordPress repository, but also for all of the relevant and probably not just full competitor, even the partial competitors uh, who are uh, having similar type of product. So we try to check uh, whatever they are doing uh, from their website, from their social media, from their community, uh, which, which things they are doing and how they are doing. We try to see that for users uh, experience. Uh, we try to talk with our users. We try to uh, send different kind of customers feedback, uh, build a one to one relationship with our customers. So understand better. Uh, even uh, we were just talking about this yesterday that, uh, if you send a survey, people will send you generic answer, but how about you connect with those in some community in probably some group or forum. So they will explain better about their experience using your product. Thank you. That was really interesting. We've got a question, please. Yeah, hi. Um, hi. Great talk. Thank you. Uh, I just had a question for, say, you're a small business and you've got limited resources to, to focus on marketing. What would you consider to be the most vital channels or, or marketing angles to focus on? Uh, channel? Or social media platform, you mean? Uh, any aspect of marketing. What, what's uh, well, the easier one to get started with Twitter. And I really understand the uh, small business have limited uh, budget. Uh, so for them, probably get started with the content marketing, uh, share those in Twitter and other platform. But more important is uh, get connected with your existing user, even if they are small in amount. I mean, if you are connected with your users, uh, they are the one who can recommend to other people who might need your product. So get started slow, but get started um, at the first, uh, first phase of your product. So you can get some visibility from social media. That could be Twitter, that could be your personal forum but get connected with your users. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. Any more questions, anyone? Well, Afsana, this was great. Thank you so much, thank so you. interesting. And I'm sure that people, if you've got more questions that you want to ask Afsana, you'll be around uh, a uh, whole day and I will be available tomorrow as well. Uh, actually for WordPress marketing, it depends, for WordPress marketing, any kind of marketing, it depends based on uh, your product, uh, depending on how your audience are. So uh, if we 
can talk in details with the background you, ha you have, but probably I could uh, help or I could suggest a few things for you. So I'll be available. Feel free to reach me or even get connected with me uh, in my Twitter. Uh, it's Afsana Dia. Uh, I would love to uh, have more talk. Thank you. Great.